I'm going to talk about uh, geometric, which is also uh, uh, called reflective, but from the latest trend is to call it geometric waveguides. And uh, specifically for micro LED, I'm going to compare that to other technologies and to other types of waveguides and, and do some very rough calculations. Um, uh, but it does not specific numbers. You can choose, you know, your own numbers later on. So what is a waveguide? I'll go, I'll review that a bit. And there are two main um, types or technologies being used. And one is the geometric, which I'll focus on in a minute. And that would characterize this, that uh, all colors are projected and coupled into the waveguide. The beam propagate within the waveguide by total internal reflection. And then all the colors are reflected outwards. So since the, all the colors, red, green, and blue co-propagating the waveguide, it's, it's, the waveguide can support a large field of view. Just for comparison, diffractive works differently. You have a diffractive or a hologram or grating coupling in, create dispersion of the colors. Each one propagates a different angle. And then when they couple out, the grating creates a negative uh, dispersion that actually causes the beam to co-propagate towards the observer towards the eye. The issue is here that because the beams propagate at different angles, they consume much of the dynamic range of total internal reflection. Bottom line, you can inject a much smaller field view, for example, in this single waveguide, and there's various ways to overcome that, but the simplicity of ge geometric waveguides enable very large field view. I'll talk about that in a minute. How does the waveguide in generally looks like? It's uh, you have a two stage. Uh, one stage is um, in this example is the uh, example of uh, Lumus waveguides, which is um, partial reflectors, as I showed before. But these ones reflect from the projector, total internal reflection in the waveguide, and then reflected uh, while guided to the second section. And you can see it here in section two where the Continuous reflection causes the aperture in the uh, that projected the image into the waveguide to actually multiply. So if they like multiply apertures propagating in the waveguide, and then the second section, which is another set of partial reflectors, propagate it outwards. So you have actually multiplication of the aperture by two dimension. How do we produce these waveguides? We talked previously about coating. So this is the, the um, know-how is how to design exactly the coating that enables on the one hand reflect the image towards the eye, but on the other hand, see the scenery, the see outwards. Then you stack these uh, plates, slice them, polish them, cut the slice into uh, shape. And the last thing actually not shown here is a connect the projector into this waveguide. So the main issue that's going to be interesting here is that the coupling in. The coupling in in, um, in uh, uh, geometric waveguide is limited by the size of the waveguide. So if the width and uh, the wider, the more you can uh, project in. So it's relatively, let's call it wide. And for comparison, let's talk about the diffractive. We talked about the dispersion of the beams. And the main issue that limits the aperture of diffractive coupling into the waveguide is the fact that the reflected beam, let's see the blue here, must not hit the input coupler because then it will couple back out and create scattered and problems with the image. So the size of the coupling in is limited by one reflecting, reflectance from the waveguide, which is not the case in geometric. So the aperture here is much larger than, than in diffractive, and that has a lot of impact on, on the whole system. So let's look, take one example of a projector. Um, the, the backbone these days of, of projecting into a waveguide is CMOS, liquid crystal on silicon. But the, the, the next generation, let's see the things that emerging is the micro LED. So let's compare the two. 
So we talk about here, this is like uh, how um, um, Elkos would look like, but I unfolded this for simplicity. So you have a source of light, which is le colors, uh, LEDs, and then these colors cause what's called homogenizer, means the output from this homogenizer is a uniform, all the colors emerging from this section. Now this section is propagates the optics, collimate the light onto the liquid crystal, and this liquid crystal is collimated into this aperture. And this is the aperture I showed before. This is schematically, which is the entrance to the waveguide. So entering the waveguide, we have the light that comes here, from here. And for efficiency, if you properly design the optics, this plane of homogenized beam should be imaged directly here. So each beam that was collected from this section enters the waveguide. That enables the... Um, Elco system to be efficient. It's losing half the power because it needs to be polarized, but but basically it's a good, efficient way of coupling light into the waveguide. Now let's look at the micro LED for comparison. It's actually the last section only. So you have light coming from the micro LED and then collimated into the waveguide. But here we don't have this pupil imaging approach and just light that's scattered Lambertian or any other distribution, some of it is collected into the, the waveguide. So we have much more loss when we look at micro LED when we try to couple it into a waveguide. Um, the, the other thing that we have to take for example here, here since the light is more collimated into the waveguide, there's less scattering from the um, optomechanics around. In micro LED, we should take that into account. The light goes everywhere. And that creates a degradation in, uh, may create degradation in contrast. So let's put some numbers into this. And so this is just an estimation to give you a, a rough estimation, but it's not necessarily the right numbers. So let's look at first what is needed. Let's here, which is the aperture. Let's assume we want a 30 degrees field of view, which is 30 by 30 is 45 degrees about diagonal, which is reasonable used. Uh, field of view. And let's assume the aperture is two by two millimeters here. So if we take the attendu approach, which is the product of the two, we have 60 millimeter degree. Okay, that's what we need to couple into the waveguide. That's what the waveguide asks the projector to do. But if we take Elcos, for example, it's a one millimeter LED right here. It's Lambertian emission. I took for Lambertian 120 degrees um, uh, divergence. I don't work steradian. I make it simple, just degrees. And and with the homogenizer also degrades a bit the attendu. So we have 250 millimeter degree. We compare this 60 with 24. We get and and square that to the power two because it's two dimension. Take out the polarization also. So we have three percent efficiency. That's for example, I'm not taking here into transmittance of optics and all. Well, if we do the same for micro LED and say just general number, five millimeter size of the micro LED, we get 600 millimeter degree and that's only 1% efficiency. So we see inherently because the pupil imaging and the small source of the LED that the efficiency in uh, Elcos system may be better than um, than uh, micro LED. Although it's more cumbersome, complicated, projector is not as big. That's why everyone wants to move. So let's see how we can improve this efficiency issue. So I put here an example again from my Tendu point of view, and I change the aperture. Okay, I call this one diffractive, and this one, the large aperture, is the uh, uh, geometric. Okay, so in this case, typical numbers may be in the region of one millimeter aperture or um, or uh, just a bit more, but not much. But in geometric, it can be within the three millimeter aperture. Okay, so if we need five, um, if, if we project from the micro LED, five millimeter by 100, by Lambertian, six, which the numbers I said before, then we get for one millimeter, 0.25% efficiency. But if we make a large aperture, just a factor of three, which is what geometric offers, we get two point something uh, millimeter, uh, percent efficiency. Uh, assume, of course, two dimension, which is power of two. So we get 
all in all, it's a factor of nine bet. And we do see that in, ex in experiments. We do that in the systems, geometric wise guide versus, um, versus uh, a geometric versus diffractive does show in order of factor of nine, improved in coupling efficiency. So let's look, at, uh, but many times I may ask, okay, so I'll get a lens, I'll get a better lens. It collects an F number. Was it aperture versus F number? So this is to ex explain the situation. We have four systems here. Let's call first system unbalanced geometric. We have a large aperture, but we use an optics that is not as good. It doesn't collect all the Lambertian beam emitting from the micro LED. In this case, we're not fully illuminating the aperture. We're not using the system as good as we could. We need to improve the optics. Okay, let's take an opposite situation, which is also not balanced. A very good optics. I collect all the light, perfect optics, low F number, what's called, but it's diffractive and the aperture is small. So now we are limited by the aperture. So I would call this system a tendu limited, and this system is F number limited. So it's not exactly the same when you compare F number with a tendu. So this is as good as your optic would be, we cannot be any better. And, and on to compare, this is two balanced system, which means in geometric, I have a very good optics that collects low F numbers, collect all the beams, Lambertian beams from the micro LED, into the waveguide. And if I have diffractive system, I would probably not need as good and expensive optics because the aperture is small. So I'm balanced, balancing F number with it and do. Okay, so that's, that's for, for comparison between the two, just Lumus is there, here. We're able to take large F number and project it into the large aperture. That's why the, our efficiency is the nine times factor that you saw in the previous slide. Okay, let's go on the uh, top of this and move it to some architectures. So we have two main architectures going into um, uh, in, in, in micro LEDs. One is, let's say, colors side by side on the same panel. And the other trend is X cube. So the main issues between the two is this. If side by side, the overall size of the panel is larger, let's say actual pixel, effective pixel is larger. So effective focal length is longer and we need large aperture uh, to fit that and collect the light into the waveguide. If we have an X cube, each pixel by itself, effective pixel is much smaller because all the colors are effectively overlapping, but we have mechanical limitations. So EFL, focal, focal length needs to be shorter on one hand but on the other end, the mechanics limiting us. So this is challenging mechanically and more to produce something like this. Well, this system is going to be easier from the optics point of view to put together and, and inject into the system as long as you have a large aperture. We were able in Lumos to produce both ways. We, are, we, we can have uh, an effective uh, X cube and overcome the mechanic issue by what we called integrated projector. So we have integrated that integrates projector and waveguide, and we can achieve a much better, uh, even overcome the mechanics, and also have uh, this system, which is with a large aperture. So what are the other trend I see with micro LEDs? Everyone wants to make want to make the projector smaller, the the panel smaller. So we make up make it smaller, and uh, this is for example a reference system, and if we make the panel smaller, so I just scale down the system and keep it as is. Now, the, this, this is a very problematic situation because if you make the panel, let's say, half the size, but brightness to the eye box eventually after the waveguide is determined by how much total power enters the aperture. Not nits, but lumens. How much total power goes into, into the waveguide? So if you make this is smaller, by factor of two, in area it's factor of four, you need your power from the panel to be, uh, to keep the same. Or in nits, it's to be four times more. Factor of four, more nits, if you used to have, um, uh, I don't know, 250 K nits from a panel, in this case, in this case, you need a million nits. 
just to keep the same iBox intensity. So that's, let's say, challenging. But if you can, on the other hand, compensate by having a large, F, uh, smaller F number, or let's say better optics, collects more angular, you can compensate by having the same nits, which is reasonable for panels, and just improve improve your total power into the system by improving your optics or what they said the f number into uh into the optics so so this is what we do we're able to accept we uh smaller panels we worked with larger panels work with smaller panels and compensate by a better optics with shorter focal lengths with all the challenges of a shorter focal lengths this is a demo that we actually produced and worked. Uh, by the way, all the things I just said is way more challenging when you start talking about large field view. Okay, and everyone's moving for 70 degrees field view. So this is a 70 degrees field of view image from uh, it's some of it is very bright. So you see it's saturating. This is the, the, the system itself. We are able to do 70 de degrees, which is actually 80 degrees in one system and another, which is 60 degrees. We were able to achieve 0.8% efficiency when we measured it needs to needs. I mean, like uh, 250,000 needs on the panel was translated to about 2,000 needs in the eye box, which is, uh, from what we understand, is a very good conversion efficiency, very, by far better than any other uh, alternative uh, into and into a 70, uh, six, between 60 and 70 degrees field of view, which is large field of view, very large. To conclude, uh, micro LED, we see that as the next thing because it's uh, even efficiency in terms of how much it illuminates the field of view. We don't think AR will need full images, full color all the time. Um, the, the one thing we learned from working with customers is that projector and waveguide need to be designed by the same team. There's a substantial synergy between the projector here and the waveguide. It's not like you build one and you build the other one and then let's see it fits. Uh, there's substantial synergy between the two and not even specific, just transference uh, specification will work. The other issue is that, um, uh, of course, what I tried to convey in this meeting, in these slides is that geometric waveguides are much more efficient than any other alternative. Um, and, and, and a very easy to implement for very large field view. So the issues I talked at the beginning of dispersion and all doesn't exist. So we, we actually produced and demonstrated a 70 degrees field of view in this. We're working on it right now. The integrated projector is, um, is the next thing and it it's enables very high efficiency uh, and small fall form factor. So the, for example, the, um, 70 degrees, what you see here, this small thing is a projector for 70 degrees. This is like a regular uh, combiner or waveguide. 